Jesus, we worship you. Lord 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 Jesus, we worship you by the Holy Ghost. Lord Jesus, we worship you. Lord Jesus, we worship you. Lord Jesus, we worship you. In spirit and truth, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we worship you by the Holy Ghost. Lord Jesus, we worship you in spirit and truth. Lord Jesus, we worship you by the Holy Ghost. Lord Jesus, we worship you in spirit and truth. Oh, Lord, we yield to you. Holy Spirit, we yield to you. Offer the sacrifice of praise. Holy Spirit, we Holy Spirit, we yield to you to offer the sacrifice of praise. Lord Jesus, we worship you by the Holy Ghost. Lord Jesus, we worship you in spirit and truth. joyful sound oh with the Holy Ghost sound oh with the high praises of the Lord oh with the joyful sound oh with the Holy Ghost shout oh with the high praises of the Sound. Oh, with the Holy Ghost shout, oh, with the high praises of the Lord, oh, with the joyful sound, oh, with the Holy Ghost shout, with the high praises of the
towards heaven. Yield yourself to him. Holy Spirit, we yield to you to offer up this prayer. Ourselves to you right now. Holy Spirit, we yield to you to offer up this praise. Lord, we yield to you right now. To offer up this praise. Lord, we yield to you. Right now, with a joyful sound, with the Holy Ghost shout, with the high praises.
mighty, mighty is our name. Holy is the name of the Lord. Jesus, we worship you by the Holy Ghost and power. Jesus, we worship you in spirit and truth. Lord Jesus, we worship you by the Holy Ghost and power. Lord Jesus, we worship you in spirit and truth. Holy Spirit, we yield to you to offer the sacrifice of praise. Holy Spirit, we yield to you right now. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> Sauve every day, sauve every day, sauve every day, remember my mother, my man, sauve every soul, my mother, my son, my mother, 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 my Salvation to the Lord and to his Christ. Salvation belongs to the Lord and to his Christ. Salvation belongs to the Lord and to his Christ. Salvation belongs to the Lord and to his Christ. Almighty God, let the glorious winds of the Spirit sweep the nation. Let the glorious winds of your spirit sweep this place. Let the glorious wind of the spirit sweep this neighborhood, this community, the houses of this place, the houses of this land. Let the fires of revival burn. Let the glory of your church now shine. Lord, you make the desert to bloom again. Oh God, you make a church now shine. Lord, the Bible make and cause your army to arise. Oh God. Father, you alone cause the desert to bloom. Oh, God, make a church now shine. Cause your army to arise, oh, God. Let your glory now be
the high praises of the Lord. With the Holy Ghost shout, with a joyful sound, with the praises of the Lord. Hallelujah. What so few people understand today is that we're not here to lead the church in a song. We're here to lead the church in a place of worship. A place where you enter into a glorious realm called heaven. A place of interaction with the Holy Ghost. A place where Father begins to touch you and fill you with the things that only belong to Him. You can't get any other way. It's impossible to have outside of this wonderful interaction and fellowship with Jesus. Hallelujah. We're showing you something that you can live in a second by second, minute by minute, day by hour by hour, day by day. Oh, week in and week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. Growing more and more in the things that God has. Until everything about the day star and the glory of heaven begins to rise and shine through your life. Until oh, the abundance of the wellspring from on high begins to flow forth from you. In such a way it cannot be denied by any review or investigation. I watch, I watch, I, 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 I've watched as so many people get so caught up in the, in the mechanics of a song and they want to sing a song and it has nothing to do with the program that belongs to someplace else. This is a place where worship is invited by the Holy Spirit and, 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 and we're allowed to come and participate and walk over into a realm of divine power and grace that causes us to be literally raptured. Somebody said, I don't believe in a rapture. I have a rapture all the time, man. I, I, I live in a rapture. I'm on the kind of mumble pile of a time. In a super I live in a cutting or catching away. I pray in Jesus' name today. Everything changes for your life. You get caught away in God. Get out of the mechanics and get into the relationship. Get out of the idea and get into the actual experience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello, Pat Sarbe Pitaya. Halimangena Moshapa Saya de Kitai. Mamuluku Shamba. The Mamasan of the Pata. The Mamasan of the Pata. The there's a chord there you can find. Let the high praises. Let the high praises.
powerful sound with the Holy Ghost shout with the sound of praise. With a joyful sound with the Holy Ghost shout with the sound of praise. With a joyful sound with the Holy Ghost shout.
It's about time that the mighty men get violent and the violent take it by force. There's a sound that comes forth from a shell. There's a realm that comes forth to the high praises. The church needs to arise and begin to have and participate with. There is a realm of divine glory. There is a Shout to the Lord. Jesus, we worship you with 
of heaven that we live in all the powers of darkness and all the things that are in this world try to prevent us from accessing this place try to prevent God's people from accessing this place but we won't allow it for the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it before us uh, uh, God made me violent uh, Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord Jesus, we worship you. Lord Jesus, we worship you. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> yeah! Come on, man! Shout to the Lord! Shout to the Lord with the Holy Ghost! Hey! Shout to the Lord! Let the voice and the sound of joy! Let the voice of praise! Let the sound of joy! Let the voice of praise! To you! <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woo. <laughs> Woo. 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 Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs>
Aleluia. <laughs> Aleluia. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Mama Gano Shabreba Bane. Praise the name of Jesus. Mama Gara Namane. Mala Mane Rimane Nasekiri Mama Mama Nanea. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus. <laughs> the Lord Jesus. Send us the Holy Spirit so that we could live in heaven. I live in the kingdom of the dear Son. I live in the kingdom of Jesus Christ right now. The Apostle Paul said in Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 that he delivered me, delivered Paul and me out of the kingdom of darkness, hallelujah, into the kingdom of the dear Son. Now, I know a lot of people, they don't believe that, so they're going to live out what it is they believe. That's for sure. For without faith, it's impossible to please God, and the only way that the miracle and the reality of such a thing is ever going to take place. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I'm hot. I'll tell you right now, you get yourself in heaven, and temperature won't matter no more. Amen. Hallelujah. It won't be about how you can take care of your body, take care of your interest, because they won't even come into view anymore. If you should participate in beginning to open up the wide the gates. Listen, I'm telling you, you don't understand. You don't understand. If there's ever a time that God needs a company of people to stand up in the earth who knows how to defeat Satan at every point, I write unto you young men because you've defeated Satan in every point. I write unto you young men because you overthrow every hindrance he puts up. You bust down every wall he erects. You stop everything he tries to do. You strong. Hallelujah. Because the word of God abides in you. I'm telling you, listen to me. You step over into the realm of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ and start living over here in heaven and recognize that Jesus is the door and that God the Holy Ghost gives us access. You won't never allow yourself ever again to step into a, in a place of spiritual poverty, being oppressed with sadness and sorrow, knowing that that is the strategy of Satan to prevent the glorious church from being revealed. The high praises of God from being made manifest. We even talk about how Jesus was upset of merchandising in the church. My goodness, most of you support the merchandising of the church with all the CDs that you buy from the Christian artists that primarily all they doing is writing songs to please and satisfy your ears. And really, my large part had nothing to do with worship and praise because I know it. I can feel it. I can hear it. And everybody's like me, can, knows it and feels it and hears it too. And nothing but, and nothing but misusing the things of the kingdom of God, making merchandise of the people of God. The terrible thing is the Lord said, my people love it. They enjoy it that way. They love to be oppressed. Well, not this one, not this one. Me and Paul don't. Hallelujah. A couple of other people. And we're going to try to convince the masses in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Well, you can be seated. <laughs> I'm on JK. Now don't anybody leave. Now don't anybody leave. Now don't anybody leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. There's just a few of you here anyways. Only for, um, some people couldn't make it through the worship. Baby, I just want you to keep playing just a little bit for me. Just keep strumming just a little bit. Just a little bit, just for a few minutes. While everybody settles down. Hallelujah. Just the same thing, and then to be any different. See, you understand, you need to understand. God shows us a place that he wants us to go. Says, here's the place that's a realm that's available for you tonight. It's available to you right now. 
Just a couple of people see it. Maybe there can only be one. Doesn't matter. Just takes one for the rest to follow. Huh? Just takes one to see if the rest. It just takes one person to know where they're going for everybody to get there. Does that make sense? You don't have to have everybody knows where we're going. It's fine when everybody does. Sometimes you get more cooperation, more participation. Really, only one person needs to know where we're going, and everybody just needs to follow. And then when you think, see things happening, trying to prevent what God wants to do. You know, I believe with all of my heart, most people, they really want to follow Jesus. They want to do what God wants, wants them to do. It's just that they don't know the right way. They mix it up with their way. The Lord says, train up a child in the way that it should go, and it will not depart from you. My kids did not depart from me because I trained them up in the right way. In the way that they should go. You can't train up your children the way they should go when you don't know the way to go. So what happens to so many people, well, I'm a Christian, I'm in church, and my goodness, I did everything the Bible said. No, you didn't. God's not a liar, you are. God's not deceived, you are. God's not messed up, you are. Huh? It just, they thought they knew the right way to go. And what happened was the fruits of the life proved that they didn't know the right way to go. So, you know, everybody, everybody doesn't need to know where to, how to get to the destination. They just need to know how to follow. God gives some people special gifts of counsel that you do not have. And then you want to just do it after the flesh. You want to choose and pick people after the flesh and oppose God with your choices. That's nuts, man. That's nuts. I have people tell me all the time, oh, you know, I'm, I'm really serving God and I'm really loving God and I'm really walking with God. And my, my issue is then, well, why do you have so many problems then if you've got all this relationship with the Lord? And then they want to try to act like the devil's fighting them. Well, why does the devil want to fight you? You're not doing nothing. Give me a break. No, you got your problems because you're not obeying God and walking in the right way. And then, and then, they, then they act like, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to get it right. Oh, how are you going to get it right? Well, in their mind, they're thinking, well, I'm just going to do more of the same that I'm doing now. Ha! Doing more of the same that you're doing now ain't going to get you anywhere further down the road in God. You're going to have to stop, change everything. God's got to change. He's granted to us the power and the ability to change. Ha! So the next year, you're more radical than you are now. You're more right than you are now. You're more representative of the kingdom of God than you are now. You know, but you, you're walking in a greater dimension of love and joy and peace. Now, look, not five minutes of peace, 10 minutes of joy, and 15 minutes of love. <laughs> not a short afterglow that lasts for about an hour. <laughs> oh, man. I believe that the Lord grabs hold of some people in the power of God's on you right there, Randy. Yeah, I hear you a little shabai. He's free. He gives it out to everybody. I mean, you could be the, you could be the worst rascal in the, on the planet tonight if you yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. He'd baptize you in glory, make you feel like you never felt before. Huh? While the religious go home empty. You see? Huh? God is looking for it. Somebody says, oh, well, you know, I love God as much as anybody else. I don't know what the problem is with my connection. Because you haven't cracked the door open to Jesus. That's the problem. Holy Ghost, see a little cracked door open to Jesus. <sighs> Power God comes rushing in. The Lord says, open wide the gates. How? Was, would a Holy Ghost shout? But if you haven't practiced Holy Ghost shout all week, some of you haven't practiced Holy Ghost shout since you were b born of heaven. <laughs> you ain't going to know how to do that. And with a sound of praise, with a, well, rather, I mean, a sound of joy and the voice of praise. Somebody said, well, where'd you get that? Well, that's an interpretation of the tongues that we were singing. See, we were singing God, singing. We were singing unto the Lord with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and we sing spiritual songs and we lead the way singing in the spirit God also causes us to sing with the understanding also to know what it is that he's saying if we would do we would be able to arise and participate with what the will of the Father is right now see all I want to know all I'm concerned with all I desire 
is to know what Father is doing. I don't have to agonize. I don't have to go through penance. I don't have to go through whatever it is that people religiously go through. All I got to do is just ask and be willing to participate with the simple things he gives me to do. I'm not known of anyone that Father gave them complicated things to do. Yeah. Father gave everybody real simple things to do that anybody can do who's willing to have the simplest kind of childlike obedience and heaven whew, rushes in. Jesus moved, removed all the problems out of the way. He removed all the sin. He removed all the offense. He removed all the iniquity. He removed all the satanic stronghold. He did all the hard things. And now it's just left to your will. And most people don't get this. They blame the devil for everything. No, no, it's really your will that allowed the enemy of, uh, of your soul to oppress you and hold you back and shut your mouth and shut you down and cause you to walk in your own way, which you believed was the right way. But the results weren't the evidence of that which God, the Holy Ghost, has given. Uh, I am to just tell you right here tonight, I am so blessed with the high praises of God and the people in this place who's willing to get radical and shout unto the Lord and there be a Holy Ghost shout. Yeah. I'm blessed in God tonight with the people in this place who are willing to have a joyful sound and, then, and a voice of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> There's really no reason that you should ever have a sad day, sad eyes, sad heart, sad anything ever again. Why? Because what Christ Jesus did for us is he removed the offense. He, he removed everything that would make us unclean, defile us and separate us from the life that is in Christ Jesus. The Lord has put a word in my mouth and has called me to shout out to all of his people that are sitting in his churches, receive the life of Christ. Receive the life of Christ. Receive the life of Jesus Christ. You, you begin to take a hold of that life, you'll never have a sad and sorrowful day ever again and to flee away in terror for the glory and the presence of God that is in your life. That for glory and presence of God is like a fire that burns. We want everybody to understand it. Father was so captivated, you had to seem like that you drunk. It seemed like that you intoxicated because he wants you to know a, a realm that so saturates and fills every dimension of your life. He wants you to experience things in Him that will cause you to know that this is an abundant life. It is a joy. It's a joy that, it's a joy that comes upon you and, and it makes you feel better than anything that's ever made you feel. And that's all I can say. And then, you know, drunk is a very bad word to use, but I mean, it's kind of the Lord went ahead and used it, so I'd go ahead and use it too. Huh? Because on the day of Pentecost, when they were filled with the Spirit, everybody thought that they were drunk. And Paul said, Peter said, rather, we not drunk as you suppose. Huh? In other words, he said, we not drunk like you're thinking. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 So many people want to walk with God and please God, and they're trying to do it after their own natural ability. And I'm telling you, you can't do it that way. There was better people than you that tried to do it that way and God wasn't pleased with it. There were men more devoted, women more devoted than you under the law that tried to do it God that way, do it with God that way and he wasn't pleased with it. God made a way for us to step into the righteousness which is by faith in Jesus Christ, which is the same as living and walking in the Holy Ghost, depending upon the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Spirit continually, yeah. having a, a, such an overwhelming, empowering and working of the Holy Ghost, it's like rivers of living water gushing up out of your innermost being. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody said you preached that last week. Well, I'm preach that next week too. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. I'm about to die. Just because I just because I preach it don't mean that it's gonna be erased from the Bible now. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's gonna still right be right there. Praise God. Hallelujah. And just because I preach it doesn't mean that people understand it and live it and took a hold of the word and the faith that comes by the word. So I'm gonna declare it. I'm gonna shout to the mount until it becomes a plane in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> 
I'm not, I'm not in doubt about what God will do. I'm strong in the faith concerning those things which Father is going to do. Ah, he's going to raise up a, a mighty army, not a few. And the way he's going to do it is he's going to have those ministers of his who know the place where we're going. Who know where we're going. Who've been shown where we're going. So that they might lead the way. And all you have to do is follow. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to understand something. Things are falling out in a greater expression than ever before of where people really are and where this world is going. Very soon, this whole world will come under a worship of Satan. Men will knowingly worship Satan. That is where things are going. We talk about it in terms of the Antichrist being revealed. And people get all superstitious about the mark of the peace and the computer chip and all the rest of the silly distractions. The reality of it is the whole world is moving right now towards satanic Satan worship. Uh, that, that makes people's definition of the occult look like, you know, look like, you know, nursery games, nursery rhymes and silly ideas of, of children. Things are going to get really radical, but God, he's got a mighty army. He's got a people that stand in a realm called heaven. They stand in a realm and in a life of Christ Jesus. These men are strong and they're mighty men. They are young men, you see, in the spirit even. And they have defeated Satan at every place that they have encountered him. And I'm telling you, God is calling for consecration of a people like never before. And I'm going to tell you something else. Because the fire of God burns in this place. See, God calls men and he is long-suffering and he's patient and he's gentle and he gives a season and opportunity for everybody to change. He gave a season and opportunity for Israel to take a hold of the word of God, to take a hold of his promises and live in it. And during that time, he would not regard iniquity nor behold perverseness in Israel. There was a provision and a means for them to be able to still have the presence of the Lord working with them and dealing with them and accompanying them. But that didn't mean that God was, had left off of this judgment and had changed his mind about obedience and about what it meant to walk in purity and what it meant to walk in, in righteousness and obedience. And so, ultimately, during that space of the time, there was a, a grace, yes, a grace in the Old Testament. And it is indeed an Old Testament word. And, but at the point in time and season where God said, okay, enough is enough, he swore in his wrath and said, you will not enter in my rest. He said, your carcasses will fall in the desert. Though I had finished my work and though it was us, you know, I finished it from the foundation and I proclaimed it and established it, I swear in my wrath, I'm telling you, you're not going to enter in. You know, if the people, I'm sure that the, the, uh, the people heard it because the Lord raised up 70 prophets, you know, in Israel during the days of Moses. Okay, 70 men filled them with the spirit of wisdom that they may prophesy to bring up, to help, every more, to help that much more of the people of God, the camp of God, to understand what the word of God and the will of God is. And, you know, they weren't, they, weren't as, they weren't as responsive as wicked Ahab, who, you know, basically put on sackcloth and, and really said, look, I'm going to change. Oh, God, forgive me. You know, they, they just argued with the Lord. They just argued. I've watched people argue with God all the time. You know, one of the things that I've found in God is this. The Lord wants to speak to people on an individual basis, you see. But... There comes a time where the Lord all of a sudden tells me to get up in people's face and declare to them these things of the Lord. And it's usually because they now at the crossroads. He gives everybody a time so that they can hear it in a general call, just in a general description, in a general presentation of the gospel. And then there comes a time this Lord, Lord says, no, you listen to me now. You stand at the crossroads now. You're going to make a decision. And the decisions that you've made up to this point ultimately have been wrong decisions and they have set a course in your life that more than likely you are going to decide wrong now and this is the biggest decision you've ever made in your life. 
And God's people, my goodness, you want to learn how to just have a tender and a soft heart towards the Lord. You want to begin to learn how to participate with God more than ever before. The Holy Ghost is ca calling for a radical consecration, a radical separation, a radical sanctification, a acceptance of what God has done for us through Christ Jesus. And it has to be more so now than ever because of ultimately what God is going to allow and the satanic agenda that is going to be revealed because we read in Revelation chapter 12 that Satan and his host will be cast down, uh, cast out of heaven. They will be cast out of the unseen realm into the earth realm. They will be seen in the earth realm. And in that place where Satan gives a, a, a power to one that is called the Antichrist, they will erect an image of this, of this uh, unholy power, of this beast power of this angel of darkness and everybody is going to have to worship him and if they don't worship him they will be destroyed they will have to worship him and take his mark upon their life no one really knows what that is and it's not going to be some little secret thing that people are going to sneak in on. Yes, a credit card. It's a computer chip. Did you know when kids or babies are born in the hospital now they slide a little chip in them? That's all nonsense. That's just crazy. That's somebody who just is, belongs in a mental institution. You know, my goodness. And they gave him a microphone. And then the other folks that belong in a mental institution listened to him and propagated the idea. God help us in Jesus' name. Are you listening to me? There's a bunch of disinformation going around causing people such great confusion. Satan is the author of confusion. Don't you get yourself caught up in the propaganda and the disinformation that is going on to create unrest. You and I are supposed to walk in the truth, you see. We're supposed to walk in the truth. I don't care, you know, if there was some sinister guy, you know, you know, uh, you know, greedily trying to manipulate everything on the planet. I already knew that. His name's Satan. You know, come on, give me a break. I mean, the spirit of the world is very evident to us. It's already been revealed. The powers of darkness are at work right now. Antichrist spirit is at work right now. Big deal. God's looking for some people that will rise and become valiant, who will know how and be given the ability to destroy and defeat Satan at every point. I write unto you, young men, hallelujah, because you're strong. And you have defeated Satan at every point. Hallelujah. You are, I write a young man because you're strong and the word of God abides and you defeated Satan at every point. And we're going to see a greater falling out. People will begin to fall out more and more to consecrate a sanctified life, to live out the life that Christ Jesus has given us. God has given us the very life of Jesus. He hasn't given us a different kind of a life, a different theme on our own individual life. He has given us the life of Jesus Christ. And that's a wonderful and a glorious life. And it's about time people understand how to live it. It's something that's given to us as a free gift. God brings it into the inner circle by his mercy and grace. He just accepts us because we came in and wanted to be accepted. We didn't have to earn it. We didn't have to go through some kind of penance. We didn't have to go through some kind of restoration program. He just invited us to come in. And if we came running and grabbed his feet like the woman that was a sinner. He accepts us and cleanses us and, and brings us in to the inner circle right there. But how, how valuable is it to us? So John said, Beloved, now are ye the sons of God. Oh, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And my, that is a, just an amazing thing that people need to grab a hold of in the first place. And then he says, And it does not yet appear what, what we shall be, but we know that when we see him, we shall be like him. Hallelujah. We shall see him as he is, for we shall be like him. That is an amazing, amazing, glorious event that's about getting ready to happen. I'm telling you, the same glorious, immortal, glorious body, but beyond all of that, when we see him, we will see him as he is, for we shall be like him. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 blows my mind. I'm like, that is just amazing. I can't even imagine what that's like, but all I can say is, Yahoo! Woo! Yeah, glory, praise God! What a reward! What I gotta do, what I gotta do to have that! What I gotta do to have that! What do I gotta do to have that! We were running around, what I gotta do to get that ATV? What I gotta do around, get that popsicle? What I gotta do to get that house, that car? No, forget about it. What I gotta do to have that? This glory that would be revealed in us. This glory that's ready to be revealed. This glory, this glory that's ready to be revealed. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. We're kept by faith. How we're kept by the power of God ready to be revealed. This glory. Hallelujah. This present suffering is not worthy to be compared to this glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, why do you roar like that? It just comes out that way every once in a while. This glory. It's because I guess my voice gets a little harsh or rough. But I'm on and I'm excited. Hallelujah. But it's not the Lion of Judah. Glory. Somebody said, it's the Lion of Judah. No, it's not. <laughs> it's my rough throat and a passion inside my soul. The God the Holy Ghost put there. I'm not an actor. <laughs> I'm not a pretender. I'm not putting on any show. And if I was, this would be the wrong act. <laughs> this would be the wrong show. Because if you were an actor or a pretender in a metro or trying to put on a show, you'd be doing it for profit. Huh? And you'd try to attract more people onto yourself. I'm not doing that. I'm clearly attracting people to Jesus. I'm saying. You ain't right. I'm saying you're not right if you're not right. Amen. Amen. And if you're right, I'm saying God's got more for you. Amen. And people don't like that. They want to say, they want you to come pat them on the back and say, oh, yeah, that's good enough. Oh, you good. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I try to talk to people and say, listen, you know, God's got so much more for your life. And then they get all defensive about that, you know, because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not validating where they're at in God. Then I have to break it down for them. Look, do you believe that there's more for you in God than what you're experiencing right now? Oh, well, well, yes. No, you don't. When you said, well, well, yes, you don't. You, you don't. You're in a ditch of religion. I'm going to break you out of that. I'm going to backfill that ditch. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not going to leave you there. I'm going to backfill that thing. There'll be no ditch there no more. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we're not going to bury you either in Jesus' name. Amen. God has given us power to set people free. Amen. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to do that. I'm not leaving anybody in prison. I'm not leaving anybody in the house burning down. No, sir. If you're going to go to hell, you're going to go to hell because you locked yourself back in that prison. You went back in that house burning down when I wasn't looking. <laughs> because I'll go back in there and get you again. I'll cast the devil out of you again. Hallelujah. Set you free from that unholy thing that binds you and terrorizes your life. I, I hate Satan. I hate his works. I hate everything that he does. I hate what, how he afflicts people and then deceives them to make, a th make them think they're having a good time. <laughs> it's pretty nuts, man. Pretty nuts, isn't it? Hey, I want you to look at this verse of scripture with me here in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Oh, no, 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 no. Before you go there, I just got another thing I wanted to say in review. If you weren't in the service this morning, I want you to listen to uh, service, the morning service. You can listen to it on YouTube. I want you to listen to it. I want you to hear the call of God. I want you to hear the voice of the Holy Ghost crying out. I want to make sure that you're grabbing a hold of some things in the spirit right now. I'm telling you right. I'm telling you. In that day that we read about in uh, Revelation chapter 12 and Revelation chapter 13, God will allow Satan to be released upon the earth in such a way that no one will be able to stop him. He will overcome the saints. No one can stop him. God right now in this space of time has given us authority over unclean spirits and over all the powers of darkness to cast them out and to, to destroy the works. But right now, God is allowing an ever-increasing manifestation of the powers of darkness, of immorality, and every God-denying antichrist spirit like never before. And it's happening all around us in the workplace, in the business place, in the shopping place, in the play place, in the school place. And God's people are going to have to get their eyes open because some of us have our eyes open. We're able to see. I mean, I tell you, the other day, Ann and I, we were waiting for a plane and I said well let's just go over there into into this Fry's electronic store I walked to the Fry's electronic store and I felt a wave of demon power I felt a wave of demon power I said we're electronics electronics what are you talking about electron that electronics store boy you just have gotten off your rocker I mean you have really lost it now I uh, just talking about fries being demonic then we started looking around and all of a sudden we saw immoral immoral things have nothing to do with electronics all over the place Huh? I felt that power. I'm like, I'm walking around going, what on earth is going on in here? Because I'd walk, it's like I walk down and I go, you foul spirit, get away. It was like, I would just, all of these influences that occupy just these 
regular business places. And some of them more than others because some of them are already hooked into an agenda, a, a satanic agenda to, to corrupt people's minds and corrupt people's hearts. And it's more manifested than other places and then you can see it. It's not like, it's not like you've got to go gain. It's not like that it's something that you've got to just be suspicious of and you don't have evidence for. You can see it. We watched, con we looked at concrete evidence. We're going, what on earth is going on in this place? I mean, I'm telling you, I walked out of there and I told my wife, I said, I don't know if I've ever bought anything from this company, but we won't buy anything from this company. And, and, and um, reality of it is, if God's people could live that kind of sanctified and consecrated lives, that'd be wonderful. But if you decided you weren't going to go and shop at a store because they got, you know, they only have wholesome and, and, and good things, you probably wouldn't be eating. Because now th that agenda has taken over everywhere and now has crept into the church more than ever before. And... Um, there's something very important when we're talking about this place that God has called us to live, this life of Jesus. You can see the life of Jesus. He was manifested to destroy the powers of darkness. He was manifested to destroy the works of Satan. And that's exactly what he's called us to do. And that's exactly what John is going to say in the same chapter, in the same area that I'm quoting right now in 1 John chapter 3. He's going to say that in verse 7 and verse 8. Verse 8. But he says to you and I, having given us this call, having given us this privilege, having letting, letting us see what's going on, we get to see in the heaven. You say, somebody said, oh, I wish I was like John and be caught up in the heaven and I could see in the heaven and see what's going to happen. Behold, right now you're there. You're getting an opportunity to see in the heaven and see what's going to go on. Behold, you get an insight. So many people do not understand who they are. They have no concept of what God has made them to be. The miracle of salvation that created a new man in righteousness and true holiness. The habitation of God that God has made us. The dwelling place of the Holy Ghost that we are. Where Christ Jesus now dwells in our hearts by faith. And so they don't know how to be that. They constantly are trying to work on all the weak things of their life. And they're getting nowhere. I mean, somebody, you know, got, got that insight and started putting into business principles and business practice and says, hey, man, why are you going to spend your whole life working on your weaknesses? Why don't, rather not, why don't you work on your strengths and get, be successful? You know what I'm saying? People are concentrated on working on your weaknesses. What a waste of your time. Man, if you ain't got it now, forget about it. You know why? You just, you, look, you're gonna, what, it's going to take you 50, 50 more years to get it? You're not going to be in the workplace no more. Why don't you focus on the strength? Why don't you focus on what you're able to do, what you're excited about doing? Somebody got that and, and begin to, you know, make some big headway in, the, in, in, the, in, in business and, and in teaching people how to be successful. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, they just got it from the Word of God. They just, they just picked it up from the Word. If God's people would stop looking at all that Satan is doing and all the things that they can, can't do out of their own natural strength and start looking at their strength, Christ in you start living out a life of the God power that has been given to you by the indwelling working of the Holy Ghost, most all that other nonsense would cease to exist. It wouldn't hinder you anymore. It wouldn't be an issue. Huh? Doesn't that make sense? If all day long, all you're doing is that what you're strong at, don't you understand your weaknesses wouldn't show anymore? Because all day long, all you were doing is that what you're strong at. Ha, ha, hallelujah. The fact of it is, in that context, they don't exist anymore. Man, if God's people start walking in Christ Jesus and living in their strength, being strong in the strength of the Lord and power of his might, what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful life everybody would be having. You did not have another sorrowful, sad, diseased, sick, tormented day again. No more sadness, sorrow, depression. No more feeling like a, a loser, a failure, or whatever else. A demonic realm is lying against the truth. If you'd start grabbing a hold of who you are and believing the truth that is in Christ Jesus and stop looking at the mirror and seeing you and start looking rather in the mirror and seeing Jesus, amen, and go on there from glory to glory and say, man, look at who God has made me. Look, I've been accepted and it, by the beloved. I've been accepted into the inner circle. It's all been given to me. I, it was given to me by the grace of God. He gave me his holiness. He gave me his purity. He gave me his righteousness. Why? So that now I can be developed in it. So therefore, verse 3 of John, 1 John 3, verse 3, everyone who has this hope purifies themselves just like he is pure. He says, goes on to say, 
Everyone who does righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. He goes, and we can go and we can look and we can see that the Lord Jesus described, be perfect even as your Father is he in heaven is perfect. We can understand that, that John called us to walk even as he walks, to live even as he lives. To, God said, be, be, I'll bring everybody into this. I'll get all the apostles. Peter said, be holy just like God is holy. I mean, come on, think about it for just a moment. Be holy like he's holy. That's uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. Be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Matthew chapter 6, what verse? Five, Matthew chapter 5, verse 38. Uh, huh? Verse 48. Speak it out there. Amen. <laughs> you got the word in your mouth? Proclaim it. Shout it out. I mean, I want you to grab a hold of uh, 1 John 2, 6. We'll walk even as he walks, I mean, live even as he lives. I mean, the power of God that has been given to us to be the very dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, oh, well, I've been in the Old Testament in the days when the tabernacle of God's glory was filled with the fire of God. The pillar of fire was above it at night. Listen, you are it now. You it now. You it. Behold the glory now. You it. Come on. Wake up out of your sleep because they didn't see it in their day just like you don't see it in your day. Listen to me. They, it was a phenomenon that had explained away. They became casual and common and ordinary. They didn't satisfy the things that they wanted right at that moment. They were tired of manna and wanted flesh. Huh? <laughs> they were living in a tent and wanted a house. Huh? Hmm. They wanted that. They were living in clothes that they'd been wearing for 35 years, and, it, and they wanted a new wardrobe. They couldn't see the miracle. That none, no part of it, but diminished, or became the fabric, and in, the fabric did not decay. The shoes upon their feet, the soles upon their feet, were the same as it was the day they left Israel because of the preserving power of the living God. Everything, everything. When he puts his command and his presence upon it, lasts forever. Hallelujah. That's why, that's why Jacob said, don't you forget my bones. Huh? It was a curse to have your bones burned. Don't forget my bones. My bones are taken. My, my same body is coming up out of the grave unto the resurrection. Don't forget my bones. Uh, now people are, are, are more Hindus than they are uh, people of God burning their, burn, burning their bodies and taking their ashes and scattering them to the wind. Cursing themselves and cursing their families. Uh, I'm just going to get on everything tonight. I might even get on the politics, who knows. <laughs> hey, I want you to get into the culture of the kingdom of God. Huh? I, I'm going to tell you right now, Joshua had it right. I'm going to follow Joshua. I'm not going to follow you. I'm not going to follow the fact that it costs too much money to get yourself a, a grave. Look, man, just have somebody send you out into the, in the, in the public national forest property and just go ahead and dig a hole and put yourself in there and just cover it up. Nobody will be able to find you until Jesus comes. <laughs> Throw a little bit of lime over top of you and the coyotes won't sniff you out. Neither the bears. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't need a tombstone. To have a tree headstone. Tree stone, hallelujah. Come on, man, oh my goodness. God's got provision for you. Financially, spiritually, materially. Things are falling out now. I understand people are falling out into one extreme or the other. Be careful, be careful little ones. Be careful young ones. Be careful youth in this place. Be watchful parents. That you, all of a sudden you, you don't begin to make little compromising decisions and you have no idea what you're compromising with. But it's one step closer to falling out with the things that are coming down and you found in the camp of the enemy and not in the camp of the kingdom of Christ Jesus. This is what we're preaching. This is what we're declaring. This is what God has raised us up for. Father's put his word in my mouth in, prepare, in preparation for a very critical hour. We're living in perilous times right now. God in his love and his mercy is going to move in the United States of America with a mighty rushing wind, with the burning fires of revival. There are some people that have been handpicked and shaped by the power of the living God to deal with these issues. And I pray in Jesus' name, you'd be consecrated unto the same. God 
would be able to use your life, use your lips, use your demeanor, use the expressions of your life, use the consecration of your heart and of your very being to do and to execute his will in the serve. Everybody has this hope, purifies himself even as he's pure. I want you to turn with me to 2 Timothy. I am at war. I'm telling you right now. I'm at war like I've never been. I'm going to cast the devil out of people that don't even want the devil cast out of them. I'm telling you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, Satan will go out to this nation. Yes. Satan will lose his stronghold upon the political system, the and the, and, the, and the place of power in the White House and the Capitol building and the Senate and the Congress. You lose. You'll have to take his filthy hands off of it. I destroy your work, Satan. In the name of Jesus Christ, you have to obey. See, we don't come with sword or shield. We don't come out of the skills of our own natural ability with weapons that were forged by men for men to use that are natural carnal weapons. We don't come with sword or shield, but we come in the name of the Lord God Almighty. That's how David dealt with Goliath. And more than likely, more than likely, according to the measurement of the Bible, Goliath stood about where the white and the black meet. He was a young man. And he came running with a small little instrument, a weapon that he used to chase off coyotes and foxes and any wolves. Yeah, and he actually had to deal with a bear one time and a lion as well. Huh? But he wasn't trusting nobody in their right mind who would just trust a slingshot. You hear me? I'm going to go kill the mightiest warrior in the earth today with my slingshot. <laughs> oh, God will take those things that are forged in relationship with him. As you walk out in obedience with him, he will take those things that he develops in our life because we faithfully keep a hold of a heavenly vision and will not let it go. No matter what comes in our life, what comes in our way. They take and forge our life to cause us to deal with the most impossible hindrance, the core hindrance to Israel being set free to go and to begin to take its position and to begin to move into all the inheritance that had been given to them was that one event for a young man willing to obey God, willing to put all of his trust in God, willing to begin to deal with the powers of darkness. Uh, a young man who the word of God was abiding in him. Uh, he came and defeated Satan at this singular strategic point that held it. It was a key to advancing the change of a nation and the dynamics of the world was about to change as the Davidic kingdom was coming into place and Israel was setting in to its inhabitation and its inheritance in God as the very, as the very kingdom of God in the earth, representing the living God's kingdom. In so much so that Jesus called the eternal kingdom the kingdom of David. Radical, huh? I'm telling you, I'm going to get my part in this thing, man. I'm going after my inheritance. I'm not interested in that which passes away and perishes with the using. My goodness gracious, I don't care if you die with a trillion dollars in your bank account, God's not going to be impressed. I'm going to tell you, I don't care if you die without a bank account, it's not going to impact your place and position with God. I'm telling you, if you died in sackcloth and ashes, I'm telling you, you had nothing but rags, all worn out rags, it's not going to in any way negatively impact your position with the Lord Jesus Christ. Neither is a wardrobe where you don't ever have to wear the same clothes twice. I have any meaning, not any value. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are you, where, where, where's your heart? Where's your heart? Where are your passions? What will you die for? What will you live for? What's so important to you that you're able to stand against every passion of the lust of the flesh, every passion of the lust of the eye, every passion of the lust or the pride of life? Where's your heart? Is your heart in the, in the kingdom? 
If your passion's there, sold out for God. Father, for you I'm living. I'll do anything you ask me to. I'll go anywhere you want me to go. I'll risk anything. You know what? David wasn't really even risking anything. He was just so passionate. He's like, how are you guys going to stand here and let the stuff go down like this? No way. And Saul tries to put his armor on him, you know, and he's trying to be accommodating, going, hey, look, this just doesn't even fit me. He peels that off. Let the mighty men arise. Let the young men stand up. I'll tell you, it's a consecrated life. It's a consecrated life. It says, Lord, I recognize that you in your mercy and grace exchanged your life for mine. I now live your life. I no longer live. And I thank you so much for what an amazing life this is. This is an abundant life. This is a God life. This is the best kind of life. See, God in his love and his mercy, he came and he showed us how to make the right choices so that we could live and be blessed. He sent to us the Lord Jesus Christ. He sent to us the Holy Spirit. And he gave to us His Word. We get to choose whatever we want. If we make the wrong choices and choose things that belong to disobedience and sin, we will re reap the, the corruption and the death and the disappointment and the destruction. God doesn't want anybody to perish. He's long-suffering, not willing that anyone would, ta would take such a route and take, make such choices. But he's given everybody a free will to choose. Will you take a hold of the Word of God and live? Will you follow the leader, Christ Jesus, the captain of your salvation, the great high priest who was consecrated forever and sanctified for, for according to the word of the oath so that you and I would have a faithful high priest in the heavens for right now will you be separated and sanctified into the life that he sanctified himself for so that you he could redeem you and I and you and I could stand in a place of holiness and purity without any blemish without any sin without any defilement at all so he cleansed us, so much so, and in his mercy made a way that if we are snared by the powers of darkness and we cry out for his mercy, he will instantaneously remove all the defilement. We don't have to go through restoration. We don't have to go through some kind of penance. Instantaneously his blood will purify us. Because you must understand, purity and holiness are synonyms. They are, they are what we call linguistic synonyms. Just like uncleanness, and wickedness are synonyms. Uncleanness, we understand it, sin defiles you. You have to be born again. You have to receive a new heart and a new spirit to understand that sin defiles you. But once you receive a new heart and a new spirit, you know how bad sin will defile you and make you unclean. And the only way back in is the blood of Jesus Christ taking a hold of his mercy and his grace, the means by which he wipes away all the sin. There he makes intercession for us with his own blood. A means by which God takes our life and makes us holy and acceptable. Let me tell you where your strength is. Your strength lies in the unity. Your strength lies in unity. Not so much unity with one another. All men everywhere now, the strength lie in unity. When you get, a, when you get people to be huh, consolidated to one purpose, my goodness, it, it's, it's with that kind of solidarity, it's hard to stop a movement as the numbers grow. But there's something greater, and a greater power that exists within a unique form of unity and oneness. It's when that you accept by the free grace of God's mercy, you were made one with God Almighty. You were made one with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Father gave you the same, Jesus gave us the same glory that the Father gave him so that we might be made one with him just like he's one with the Father. Just as the Father is in Jesus, Jesus is in us, that we may be made perfect in oneness. This unity with the Lord, hallelujah. hallelujah. To be consecrated to that. Do not step outside of those things that Jesus Christ is doing, would do, who's forever perfected, who is the captain of our salvation, who sanctified himself that we might be sanctified in that same, in that same consecration. Hallelujah. Now I want you to look here with me quickly now, and I want you to, I want you to understand what's going on. Do you want God to repair you? Everybody's got these wide-eyed ideas of how God's going to use them. I'm going to tell you right, God knows your address. He's God don't need a word of knowledge to know where you're at. Why not let Almighty God do it His way? 
and quit arguing with the master and the potter and just rejoice being the clay. Why don't you just be consecrated to being molded and shaped and formed and prepared and, and, and made ready, hallelujah, to inherit all these things that God would do with you? Oh, get rid of ambition. Hallelujah. Get rid of self-ambition. Hallelujah. Mangrata day. Find your whole life and purpose in what we were singing tonight. One desire for you, God. Just you, Lord. All I'm just interested, all I'm interested is in you. Hallelujah. And then, then you're going to be made right. And then we go over here to 2 Timothy. Hallelujah. Listen, anybody starts feeling sleepy in here, stand up. I stand the whole meeting. And then people say, well, we're going to go to the meeting, we're going to soak. I'm soaking. And they got to get down and lay down in some kind of, that's nonsense. Stand up. I mean, I'm telling you right now. There was a day in time where you, you know, during the days of Ezra, before up until Ezra's day, everybody stood. Well, Ezra was reading the Word of God from the rising of the sun until it went down. That's a little over 10 hours. And everybody had to stand as he was reading the Word. After the days of Ezra, they allowed people to sit while the Word was being read because people became more diseased. They became weaker in their body, further from the presence of the Lord. I stepped back in. I'm strong, my goodness. Hallelujah. I can run. In the spirit. I can walk and not be weary. I can walk and not be worn. I'm going to walk and continue on walking. I outrun the horses. Hallelujah. Because I'm not wearied with the footman. I'm not wearied with the footman. I keep pace in the day of the horse speed. Are you listening to me? According to the prophet of the Lord said. Hallelujah. If you're worried in the day of just walking it out with the footman, what will you do in the day you're supposed to be keeping up with the horses? Huh? Um, that's the way the infantry was supposed to run. They ran alongside the cavalry, huh? Right? You had to have yourself some endurance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Especially when they left the trot and went into a canter. <laughs> Praise God. We in a day, I'm in a battle. I'm at war. You in a battle too. You at war. It just said you not. Some of you not dressed for war. You not suited up properly. My goodness gracious! You come out here looking like that. God said, "Be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day." Huh? Because you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. God's calling you and I to take upon ourselves this divine glory and this anointing that has been given to us in the power of the Holy Ghost and the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire that was poured out to us by the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ to be fully and totally equipped to do all the will of the Father. You have to be consecrated to this. He's not going to find a way to mix in with all your other visions and all your other interests and all your other ideas. All you spoke to be doing is occupying anyways not having an earthly vision God didn't say nothing about an earthly vision he say nothing about a career he said something about a vocation they say nothing about a career huh I mean look come on P come on Paul the Apostle Paul he made tents but I'm telling you right now, his heart was in the kingdom of God. Are you listening to me? I mean, look, and look at what God expedited the process in his life. He was one born out of due season. He, he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. He went up into Arabia and received abundance of revelation, communing for three years of personally interacting with Jesus. And afterwards, it was about 14, 15 years being prepared to the Lord be sent out. And how much more time do you figure you need? <laughs> Hallelujah. And all the time he was busy and all the time he was occupied. He wasn't just sitting in the house waiting until wait until the call of the Lord come into his life. He was occupied. He was gathered together under, with those who were assembled at Antioch. And before that was in submission to the brethren at Jerusalem. You know, did what they told him to do. One day they said, you go, you got to go home to your mom and daddy because you're creating too much trouble here. And he obeyed and went home. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was just a troublemaker. Why? Because he was radical. Huh? He was getting ahead of the plan. According to the apostles, they sent him home. Barnabas got stirred up by the Holy Ghost, went and got him, brought him back to Antioch. Huh? Uh, yeah, God shaped him and forged him in the fires of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mangratasea. To prepare him to go and stand and minister before kings, to change nations, to fight with beasts at Ephesus, 
to destroy the strongholds that had ruled up until, up until that time it ruled for probably three, four thousand years, such as the worship of the goddess Diana, which we know, uh, we know actually dates back to the time of Nimrod and probably before that. It probably somehow got from pre-flood of Noah, somehow skipped, somehow got on the ark. I don't know. Nimrod got on the ark by way of the, one of the people that were on the ark. because Somebody didn't train up their children the way they ought to go. Are you listening to me? Do you believe that? It's true, whether you believe it or not. Hallelujah. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in these days. You know what was going on in the days of Noah? You know what was going on? Angels, fallen angels, were interacting with the daughters of men. There was a, the, the occult, the power of the occult was so strong that you can't even begin to imagine it. And from it came a giant race. That isn't going to, and that, there's not going to be time for such things to develop, but I'm going to tell you right now, Satan and his angels will be cast out of, he, out of heaven, the unseen realm, into earth, the earth, the seen realm. And people better get ready because the agenda is well underway. John said, Paul said, Peter said, the Antichrist spirit is already at work. Jesus declared the iniquity that would happen. He said, he looked over, to, he looked across time and said, will there be any faith when the Son of Man returns. And I do not believe that Jesus Christ was talking about the second coming. I believe he was talking about the catching away because there's going to come a great falling away. True. I believe that there will be a great harvest before there's a great falling away. I see this in the scripture because the Lord Jesus said this. He said, this gospel of the kingdom should be preached as a testimony, as a witness to all nations and then the end shall come. One day, the Spirit of the Lord, in preparing me for the work that He's called me to do, this is a number of years ago, spoke to me and said to me, do you want to know when I'm going to come? And of course, I said, no, <laughs> because nobody's supposed to know that, so leave me alone. And then the Spirit of the Lord said to me a second time, and, then, and uh, you know, and, and many of you have heard me tell this story, and I was a little more reluctant at the second time, but the third time, the Spirit of the Lord says, spoke so strong, saying, do you know when I'm going to return? And I said, yes, Lord, I want to know. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, when there is no more harvest. And you can find that that is true in the Scripture, that is detailed in the Scripture, because what's going to happen, you see by the Revelation chapter 6, what you're going to see is men will be able to behold God sitting on the throne and Christ Jesus at His right hand. And rather than repent, they cry out for the rocks to fall upon them and hide them from His face because they are that rebellious, that stubborn, that anti-God, that's ruled by demon power and by deception. I want you to understand the day and time point that you're living in. When we can understand where we're going, what is the end point, we can look at the beginning point, and God gives us wisdom and insight. We can look around by discerning the times. We can understand where we're at in the timeline of God. And I'm telling you, the day is at hand. It's fast approaching. Never before have things been so set in order as they are right now. Never have things been so advanced and developed to be able to fulfill all the prophecies that have been made by the Lord concerning the last day, the, the environment, the sociology, the, geo, the, geo, the geo, geographical ch changes, the, the economic changes, the political changes, as we are beholding them right now. The wickedness that will abound more and more, the wickedness that will, that will abound, but the grace that is here to, to abound even greater, to be greater to be a greater display of the power of God. Huh? Yeah. You, you don't understand right here in San Diego County that there is such a movement of intense dedication to Satan worship right here. This is not some conspiracy theory. I'm telling you right now. You, all you got to do is give yourself to evangelizing. Go evangelizing Ocean Beach for a while. Go evangelize in Mission Beach for a while, go door to door. There's some serious places, a stronghold in Pacific Beach and other places. You will find in East County, in East South County, you will find people that are radical Satanists. They want nothing to do with Jesus. They tell you right straight they worship Satan. They believe that Satan is a greater God and more powerful than Jesus. They believe that. Most people sit in their little isolated worlds and they know nothing about this. Huh? They interact with the outside world through CNN. <laughs> My goodness, get up, man. Start moving around. You'll find out there's more going down than what you realize. Engage in the war. 
Huh? You don't have to wait till God sends you to an unreached people group. You've got unreached people groups around you. And furthermore, you've got fortified forces of hell trying to stop the advancement of the kingdom of God. And religion joins in with it and opposes also the flow of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to shout in the power and the might of the Holy Spirit till these things come down because God left me and you his church in charge. You may not feel like you're in charge, but I feel like I'm in charge. Because Christ, I received what Christ Jesus did. He put me in charge. Hallelujah. Mangrosha Pyra. Hallelujah. This is just one dimension of me being in charge here tonight. <laughs> Praise God. And it's about, it's about destroying the works of darkness. It's about meeting Satan at every place of his trickery, at every place of his devices. At every temptation, at every snare that he comes at me with, at every disease, every affliction, every torment that he puts on people, with everything that he does to blind the hearts and minds of men and say, I'm taking you down. There's only one religion, there's only one power that can stand against me. It's the power of religion. Just like it stood against Jesus. It's the only power that can stop, that, that we can't really effectively deal with. It's the power of religion. And I'm talking about Christian religion because we can take Hinduism out like that. Buddhism, out. Islam, out. Huh? Christian religion? He was so deceived. They have, as they almost as it were, that because of where they at, the name of Jesus has been neutralized. They've come under a power of deception that other religions do not have. It's pretty intense, isn't it? You better, you better listen up, sweetheart. You better listen up, buddy. You better listen up, beloved. Dear ones who think you've got it all figured out, you, they think you really understand how it's going down. You know what? You're going to have son, understand something. F Father didn't design things the way you think that they designed. He didn't design it the way you think. That you think you've got it figured out. You don't have it figured out. Father has given us a general call and a general election and given us a general description of where we're going and set into place people who speak on his behalf and declare the details. And there's a lot of folks that don't want to listen. They got their ears plugged. They don't believe and they don't agree. You know what? I wouldn't do that if I were you. In fact, I would go to some place where you do believe and you do agree because you would run je less jeopardy of being deceived in that place. You listen to me. I'm telling you. I'm not trying to find some kind of leverage for authority over people. I'm just describing to you that these things have nothing to do with human power and human ability. These things, we are totally dependent upon the Holy Ghost to lead us and to guide us into in all truth. We are totally dependent upon the mercy and the grace of God to bring us safely to the shores of that wonderful place called heaven. And he's told us how he's going to do it. He's told us about the glorious church. He's told us about the ministries that he's placed in, as the authority to lead and guide the church as they cooperate with the Holy Ghost. Now, I don't believe that anybody should be under some kind of oppressive ministry. You listen to me. People, there, are, people, there are people who abuse the power, and there's no real anointing in their life. They're trying to execute the power and the glory of God and the wonderful things of the Word of God with the arm of flesh, and they're going to get them nowhere. It's going to backfire in their face. It's just nonsense. Yeah. It's oppression. Huh? It's a wicked rulership. No one needs to stay under that. But that ain't going on around here. We're speaking by the Holy Ghost and declaring those things to you that we most certainly believe and paying the price for those things which we speak. Hallelujah. And it's not for our own interest or for our own gain. We just want to see the people of God stand up and take their place in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ so that Jesus may be glorified, so the light of his wonderful truth may shine, so that the power that has been given to us may be executed through our lives and Satan won't be able to stop or hinder you anymore. That's our whole purpose. That's our whole goal, to get you to a place where Satan can't do his tricks on you anymore or be effective in, in, in his strategies is stopping you from being who Christ Jesus made you to be. It's really that, really that simple. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have the same kind of passion that Jesus has about the place. Go look at how he has, what kind of passion Gazilli has about his house. Huh? Yeah. Look at what he gives. He gives a lukewarm time to repent. He gives everybody time to space and time to repent. But there comes a time. Come on, people, let's rise up now. Yeah. Let's not wait to the last moment. Okay, we're now in a critical situation. We better get it right now because we're now at the last hour of our space and time to repent. Goodness gracious, procrastination is a terrible thing. Get it right right now. Because if you don't get it right right now, if you procrastinate, you wait for another day, you solidify the fact that you're going to make the wrong choice in that hour. Huh? People say, I'll cry out to God and get right just before I die. No, you won't. You'd be gagged. Satan, to make sure you won't be able to say nothing. 
because he's mastered you your whole life. That ain't going to work for people who planned it out. It might work for somebody who didn't plan it out. God's merciful and gracious. He's just that way. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Jesus took the thief on the cross and brought him into the inner sanctum, the inner circle, just like he did the woman who was a sinner, a prostitute, who ran past the Pharisees, the rulers of Israel, and come and grabbed the hold of Jesus' feet. Hallelujah. That's what he did for you and me. I was defiled with sin and uncleanness. He washed me and brought me in and set me down at the table at the right hand of the power from on high because I'm seated there with Jesus. Somebody said, where, is you, where are you seated at in heaven? The right hand. What nation are you going to rule over? I'm in Jesus. I'm doing whatever Jesus is doing. I don't want anything more. Not now, not then. Uh, I'm going to be one of those who goes wherever the Lamb goes. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going to go out no more wherever the Lamb goes. I'm going to follow Him. Hallelujah. All I want is Jesus in this whole program. I just want Him to abort us. Let the Holy Ghost reveal Jesus to you. You won't want anything else either. He's wonderful. He is heaven. The love, my goodness. <laughs> There's not a person in this place or a person in the world that would not fall in love with someone so beautiful, so powerful, so, with so much going for them. And then they passionately love you and dote over you and romance you and give, present to you every good thing. <laughs> He'll win your heart. Satan tries to eclipse him, lies against the truth. I, I appreciated the little post that Chrissy did quote from TV, said the church, the Christians are making Jesus very unpopular in the world. See, all of us, all of us given a prophetic word, pretty much have the same thing. It's time for the church to stand up and begin to shine with the brightness of divine glory to start living in the joy. It's time for us to have a fallen out here and let the people who belong to Satan be seen as they belong to Satan in their oppression and their lies and their iniquity and those who belong to God stand upon his side. Everybody belongs to the Lord and everybody who wants to belong to the Lord, come over here. Everybody who's willing to learn, everybody who's willing to live in the joy and the peace and the love, everyone who's willing to live and walk in the spirit, everyone who's li willing to live and walk in this life that Jesus Christ himself expressed for us and has right now. Come over here. Hallelujah. 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 I have a responsibility. My responsibility is to glorify the name of Jesus and make his praise known in the earth. And that's what's going on on my face. I have a responsibility to have the anointing. I look at people coming to church and I think, my goodness, would they be have, behaving the same way if they knew that the responsibility was upon them to pray for the sick tonight, to deliver the word of God, to flow in knowledge and prophecy? No, they wouldn't. They'd be down on their knees crying out to God. And before they got here, the Bible had been opened and they would have been in communion with the spirit of the living God being prepared. Huh? People just want to show up. Come on, it's time for you to be a part of the body of Jesus Christ. It's part, time for you to be a viable part of the moving and operation of the Holy Ghost in the midst of the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And I'm talking about getting in the flow. I'm not talking about getting the microphone, speaking out whatever it is you want to say. You practice at home and get filled up to, to move right here. You know what I'm saying? Amen. You can feel when the anointing's flowing, huh? And you can feel when somebody gets up and starts reading a poem. Are you with me? It's like, it just collapses. Everybody's starting to feel real awkward right now, you know? <laughs> it's like a vacuum. All the glory and the peace and the, and the, and the dealing with the Holy Ghost just went out the room. Huh? You know, practice at home on your knees before the presence of the living God, hungry to be used by Him. Not ambitious, but hungry and passionate for His will to be done in your life. Hallelujah. Uh, the, uh, it's a big difference. Big difference. Hungry and thirsting after righteousness, passionate to do the will of the Father. Huge difference from ambition. Ambition has to do with your appearance before men and your success and your achievements in the eyes of men. Uh, these things have to go on. In, in, in the solitude <laughs> of relationship with Jesus Christ. 
And the beautiful thing of it is, is nobody in this place, nobody in San Diego, even the worst Satanist worshiper tonight, is no one is left out of an invitation. Everybody can come. Jesus has opened the door for everyone. Such a story has never been told from, uh, from the mouths of men. And this was not a story, but a life-given message of the Word made flesh. Hallelujah. I've got incarnated. Hallelujah. And took upon the robes of men to declare to us us, that there is a way back in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your unspeakable gift. Second Timothy. I want you to please turn there with me. I'll read this to you so everybody can get it. I'm talking to you tonight about being consecrated. I'm talking to you tonight about getting the things out of your life that are that are displeasing to the Lord. He knows if you're going to go back to it. He knows if you're going to go back to it. If you regard iniquity in your heart, you will not prosper. If you want the anointing of God to increase in your life, you're going to have to purge yourself from these things. You listen to me. You listen to me. Listen to me. You're going to have, there's going to have to be statements made, but I'm going to tell you they'll, they're lasting statements. They will sound out through the ages to come. Your stand against the powers of darkness where you had a choice to take a hold of all of these temporal pleasures, all these things that would excite the mind and the body right now and yet you stand in obedience to God to say no. I understand that that is iniquity and a work of, of, of demonic influence. I'm not going to do it. That will sound out through all the ages to come. Your obedience to the faith. Your obedience to Christ Jesus. Your obedience to walk with God when the influence of the satanic to pull you over into a place against God was so forceful upon your soul. What will you do? God's looking for an army of people consecrated to do His will. Consecrated to live for Him. First and Second Timothy chapter 2. I want to read this verse of Scripture to you here. It's... Um, Verse 21, and I'm gonna, I, 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 I've got to get this, I, I, want, I have to start at verse 19. It says, nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. It's, the foundation is good. Somebody said, oh no, the foundation, foundation's good. And it's steadfast, and it can't be changed. It's an unmovable foundation, can't be blown up, can't be forgotten, can't be done away with, stand sure. Having this seal. Here's the seal. You say you know the Lord. You say you're right with God. You say you're the people of God. Here's the seal. Here's the seal that you are on the rock, Christ Jesus, that you're on the foundation. Here is the seal. The Lord knows those that are His. And everyone that names the name of Jesus Christ must depart from iniquity. A, a consecrated life unto the Lord. And then here's what the Lord says. But in, the great, in a great house, there are every kind of vessels. There are vessels of gold. There are vessels of silver. There are vessels of wood. There are vessels of earth. There are vessels of honor. And there are vessels of dishonor. There, there, are, there is wheat and tares growing up side by side in the same field and being the field of the Lord. And the, and the servants of the Lord should, should we said, should we go? Those tares are there. Should we go? Should we pull them up? And the Lord says, no, let them grow together. Lest than pulling up the tares, you should read up the wheat also. He said, in the last day, God will sort it out. He should gather his wheat into his garner and he shall burn his, the tares with, and the chaff, just like the chaff, with unquenchable fire. And he said, so he says, he said, look, in every house, you've got to understand, you may be in the house, you may have a chair, you may be, have been baptized, you may have taken up a membership, you may give in the offering, you may be able to say all the right things, sing right songs, you may be quote all the scriptures, but watch out, you've got to understand, in every house, there's a vessel of honor, and there's vessels of dishonor, and he says, if any man therefore purge himself from these things, what things? To purge himself from any possibility be a, a vessel of dishonor, anything that has to do with wood stubble and hay and Paul's already talked about what wood stubble and hay is with respect to those things that last forever concerning the word of God and the judgments of God and the life of Jesus Christ being revealed through us in contrast to just a human existence and caught away in religion he says everyone who purges himself from these things hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Pure. <laughs> they that have this hope purify themselves even as he is pure. He has purified us so that we may remain in this place of purity. He has purged us so that we may remain in this place of, of purity. He has given us holiness so that we may remain in this place of holiness. He's given us righteousness so that we may remain in this place of righteousness. He's renewed us in the knowledge of, the Lord, of, of God who created us so that we can mortify every work and every deed and we can have nothing to do with anything that belongs to the sin that once worked its, its evil in our members and in our lives. It's a consecration. He sanctified us and perfected us by one offering. I'm, I'm, before I close here tonight, I'm going to read a list of scriptures about how that Jesus sanctified us, he purified us, how he's made us holy, how he's given to us everything that belongs to heaven and supplied it to us through Jesus Christ and through the miracle of salvation when we were made a new creation. But he has called you and I to come and live in him and abide in him and dwell in him and be like a branch that depended upon the vine. And if we're not willing to, we're going to go our own way and do it our own way we're going to end up in religion we're going to end up deceived and we're going to find ourselves not a part of that which belongs to those vessels that he will use but if you purge yourself from these things here's what the Lord says if a man purge himself from those dishonorable things and you can go ahead and you can put in there the influences of men who preach things contrary to the word of God because I watch all the time how Satan develops a really good lie. You know what a really good lie is? It has about 95% truth and 5% lie. It's hard, to, it's hard to find the 5% lie in it. But it's a trick. It's a trick. And, and you know, earlier, um, Paul had talked about Hymenus and Philetus. How that they had left and began to preach false doctrines and they were pulling men away from them. And you've got to watch yourself. You've got to watch out. You, you're going to justify yourself. You're going to justify yourself based upon what men are saying, upon the doctrines of men. It's going to deceive you. The only standard by which we should ultimately model our lives is Jesus Christ in Him alone. The only person that we're looking to and, and having as a a means to understand what we're supposed to actually do with our life is the life that he lived and has revealed to us in the pages of the Bible. All other, all other examples are nonsense. They're lies. Let God be true. And every man a liar. Huh? God's defined grace. I don't need anybody to define grace for me. Christ Jesus is the fullness of grace. He's the word of God defined, the word of God revealed. He's the word of God manifested. He's everything that God's purposed and desired to make known in the earth. And he revealed to us what, he revealed to us and defined to us what grace is in the life of grace. Amen. And that's how we're supposed to live. We didn't need anybody to tell us about grace. Just look at Jesus and live. The grace of God that has brought salvation to you and me. Titus said, the grace of God that brought... Paul said to Titus, the grace of God that has brought salvation to you and me teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. That's the grace. The grace of God. People are talking about a grace that you don't deny God, uh, ungodliness and worldly lust. Well, that's just a demonic lie. That's, huh? That's Hymenus and Philetus. You better, you better purge yourself from those wrong examples. You better purge yourself from those wrong influences. You better keep your heart with all diligence. But what it's going to do is it's going to strip you of your ability to stand against the tricks of Satan. And you're going to fall prey to his lies again and again. And you'll find yourself a demon oppressed and ultimately demons possessed. You're going to find yourself lost and undone without God or his son. Are you listening to me here? There, those who purge themselves. I'm, I'm going to purge myself from having any possibility of wood, stubble, and hay. I'm not going to be no wooden vessel in God's house. No siree. Huh? I'm not going to be, in other words, some old earthly vessel. Huh? Some, some old earthly vessel carved by the hands of man. No, sir. Uh -uh. I'm, I'm going to be a vessel of honor. I'm going to be a gold vessel. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. I'm going to silver vessel. I'm going to be something, I'm going to be a vessel shaped by the power of God, forged by the glory of God, so the Father can manifest His glory through my life and accomplish those things that He's purposed to do through my life when He gave me the life of Jesus. Well, what are you going to do? Same thing. <laughs> what are you going to do? You have to just think about this. Are you going to do this? If a, man have, if, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel of honor. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Sanctified, consecrated, set apart. I do the things that God is doing. It impacts what you watch on television. It impacts what you listen to on the radio. But more than that, it impacts what you allow, thoughts you allow to go on in your head, attitudes you allow to go on in your heart. It impacts that. It's more important. It impacts the thoughts you allow to go on in your head and the attitudes you have in your heart rather than just so much what you're hearing. Huh? And watching. And I'm telling you right now, those images and those, and those voices, you need to be careful with. Because those images and those voices can ultimately impact what you're thinking and the attitudes of your heart. I'm going to tell you right now, sorrow and sadness is not a Holy Ghost attitude. And most Christians don't even know that. They think that they, it's a part of their DNA. It's their genetics. No, it's not. Not if you're born of God. You've got His DNA and He's happy all the time. He's never sad. God's not some old man who's tired and unhappy and miserable. Our cantankerous, just worn out with dealing with the stuff. No, he's much more like a child than he would be a picture of a man, an old man. He's much more like a child. He's, he's so so full of wisdom, so full of counsel and might and insight and power, so just, so good, so loving, so merciful, so kind, so long-suffering. He's happy all day long. He's full of joy. And the reward that he has to give to us is fullness of joy. Mm -mm -mm. You might as well get practicing with the joy you have right now. <laughs> that you may inherit everything that God has for you. If you purge yourself from these things, you shall be a vessel of honor, sanctified, prepared, sanctified, set apart. I'm consecrated to live this life. Lord, I want to be taught of you. Holy Spirit, I want to learn from you. Lord, I'm not ambitious about what I can do with the stuff that you give. Oh, God, I want to know you. I want to be your representative. I want to glorify the name of your only begotten Son, Father. Lord Jesus, I recognize that it is only by the power of the Holy Spirit that I can glorify you. Holy Spirit, you're the spirit of holiness. You're going to show me how to walk in this purity. Remember, holiness is a linguistic synonym to purity. You're going to show me how to walk in purity. Those who have purified their hearts through unfeigned love, purified our hearts in obeying the truth through unfeigned love, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Can you imagine being a part of a church like that? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're so ruled by love that forgiveness just flows out of you like a river. You just never hold against any, you never had a bad attitude towards anybody, hold any harbor, harbor any attitude to hold anything against anyone. Hallelujah. And now, what a, what a place of freedom, eh? That's why all hurts and offenses were never in you or that might exist in you were never caused by someone else. They were caused by you. And that sounds like a paradox to most people. But if you would have simply obeyed God and did what he told you to do, you would have forgiven them and loved them just like Jesus forgave you and loved you. And you wouldn't have a hurt or an offense. So it's really your fault. It's your making. It's a result of your disobedience. Oh, no, you don't know what they said about me. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. <laughs> oh, you don't know what they did to me. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Hallelujah. Oh, I praise God that he's come to give us a knowledge of the truth. And I pray in Jesus' name you'll be able to see a wonderful, this wonderful life, this abundant life that he's given, that you'll recognize the sin and destruction of the powers of darkness that would steal from you this life and glory of Jesus Christ, this anointing. Oh, you want the, you want the glory to be revealed? Separate yourself. Recognize sin is your enemy, not your friend. There's things that belong to this world, your enemy, but not your friend. They war against you. Listen, fleshly lust war against your soul. If you don't know how to fight, you better learn. Say it again. Fleshly lust war against your soul. Satan has purpose to take you out. Satan believes that he can do whatever he wants to me whenever he's 
good and fat and ready. He's just that obnoxious. Huh? And he's, and, he, and he's aiming to prove it. I'm at war. I'm going to keep myself over here in the Holy Ghost. Ah, I'm going to keep myself over here in Jesus because he cannot touch me. Huh? And if, I look at the, if I look at the power of the darkness, I'm going to be looking right, up, right, right from underneath Jesus' left shoulder. Huh? <laughs> I'm going to be staring right underneath his, you know, elbow. Huh? As he's got his hand out there against the powers of darkness. I'm going to go, in Jesus' name. <laughs> That's hidden Christ. That's put on Christ. Put on, therefore, the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust of it. Huh? I'm right there in him. Hallelujah. I'm staying over here in you because I know what Satan's purpose to do and I'm not letting him do his work. God's got to have a mighty man. God's got to have... A company of strong men. We got to understand what's going down here, so that we don't ultimately let down the guard and think that we can just coast along and just be so consumed with our own self-interest and how things are going for me. You know, most people is sitting in the church. I hate to say it, most people. I hate using that word. They just sitting in the church and they just all they can think is how things are going for me. What's in it for me? What's going? Well, you don't know what's going on in my life. Really, who cares? Really, who really cares? Why should we be burdened with such nonsense? How about come on over and over into the life of Jesus Christ and getting yourself in a heavenly realm and being occupied with the good things of God? That's what God purposed you to do. Why should we come over and have a pity party with you? Why should we be pulled down into it? I mean, goodness gracious, I learned a long time ago, don't read emails after 7 o'clock at night. Satan trying to disrupt my sleep with everybody's hate mail. Ah, oh, if you were a good pastor, your church would be bigger, and you really think you're something special. Blah, blah, blah. You think, well, if that's the insights of the Holy Ghost, <laughs> we're all in trouble. Thus saith the Lord, I have the Spirit. You wouldn't believe this stuff. My goodness. Huh. He was deceived. Let's see it. Deceived. The fruits of their life could show it. I could write back and say, yeah, I know. And I, 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 remember, I, I remember you called you out uh, for being in adultery about a year ago. But I didn't do it. Or, oh, yeah, I remember you. You're that person who caused trouble everywhere you go. Oh, yeah, I remember you, the person that sat there frowning the whole time we were worshiping God. <laughs> I didn't do it. Because you know who they are. You know the voice of, you know the voice of the accuser, the liar, the yeah. condemner. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He was just paying attention to that nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. The lies of Satan. Mm -hmm. The opinions of men. Get out of the offense, people. Hallelujah. Get out of the offense. Huh? Perfect love have they who love God's word. Nothing shall offend them. Get out of the offense and get into the acceptance. Amen. And the beloved. Don't be, don't be consumed with the earthly things, with stubble and hay. Don't be consumed with these interest, earthly interests, but be caught away rather in the glorious things, the eternal things, the heavenly things. Paul said, seek immortality. Isn't that an interesting doctrine? He said, for everyone who seeks immortality, eternal life. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going after this living forever. Hallelujah. I, I, I minister to myself every day continually. I live forever. I'm living forever. Hallelujah. Huh? Father said he lifted up his hand and said, I live forever and I'm in him. So I'm agreeing with him. I live forever too because I'm, I'm living forever. I'm going for life forevermore. I'm going for life forever. I'm going for life without end. I, I'm going, I've got this life, an eternal life that belongs only in Jesus Christ. It's mine. It's mine. This life is mine. We have beheld the eternal life, John said. We beheld the eternal life. Our hands handled the eternal life. The eternal life was manifested unto us. He's talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's talking about this life of the Spirit, this life that God has given to anybody, whosoever asks, whosoever wills. Oh, Rabba Sikiri Namonjala, Embeni Namanduri. I pray tonight in the name of Jesus Christ that you become your heart and your affection become so given over to the Lord. Hallelujah. You so give your desires over to Him that as you read the Word of God, 
you can actually experience the power in the life that it is. It takes, too, it takes people way too long to come into the fellowship with God to where in reading the Word they experience the power and the life. They feel the glory and the mantle. They, they, they actually are, as it were, captivated and lifted up into another realm. I pray that religion gets out of the way that would prevent you from having that. Religion will make it an intellectual process. Religion will make it something that you, you think about and you ascribe to after the mind but can never live in. <laughs> And be like Paul said, we serve God with the, we serve the law of God with the mind, but with the flesh, you know. I mean, goodness, why would you want to live like that way? With flesh, we serve the law of sin. My goodness, uh, with my mind. Because I delight, I see the glory there, I see the power there, I see the beauty there, but within me there dwells no good thing. That's the life of religion. That's the life that's powerless absent of the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. It's the life absent of Jesus Christ, the living presence of Jesus in us, Christ in us. Paul surely didn't say that later. It's Christ in me. I, I no longer live. Hallelujah. Now there's therefore now no condemnation. Before I was condemned in religion, but now there is no condemnation, for I'm in Christ Jesus. I no longer live after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ah, we are the circumcision that worships God. Hallelujah. In the spirit. And we have no confidence in the flesh. A boat of no, I have a boat of no confidence in you. But don't feel bad. I have a boat of no confidence in me. Somebody said, I just wish somebody would believe in me. You're a nutcase. You don't want anybody to believe in you. Why don't you rather believe in Christ Jesus? Why don't you get out of that lie? Why don't you purge yourself from those things? Are you listening to me? Oh, I just wish I had somebody believe in me. My goodness. Well, do you listen to the doctrine that you're preaching right now to yourself? Don't do that. Flee from those things. Purge yourself of these things. I'm Romaniah. My name ain't Goliath. Oh, if you could grab a hold of your strength, hallelujah. Huh? If you could grab a hold of the strength of the Lord and the power of his might, if you grab a hold of your strength, if you grab a hold of the Jesus within you, if you grab a hold of reality that God in his mercy and grace and made me the temple, a holy place where God himself dwells. My, everything will begin to change as you meditate on it. Hallelujah. As you talk about it, Lopo Sopranene, as you cry out to God, say, Oh God, these things I want to establish in my life. I want them to be experienced in my life continually. Father, this is what I want. I want the fruit that I have mastery over every power of Satan, that I am able to stop him at every point of his attack, that I am able to deal and conquer with everything, conquer everything yeah. that he would throw at me and against me. Yeah. There has to be great awakening. There has to be a great revival. For there to be a great awakening, there has to be a company of mighty men arise. For there to be a great shaking, people want God to come down and do it. God's already come down. He's now sent us in his stead. He sent us. He sent the church. Huh? <laughs> the angel of the Lord appeared in Cornelius' house and said nothing. He said, send for Peter. He can tell you everything. Hallelujah. Jesus appears to Peter and says, go tell him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I'm telling you, I get so jealous about these men who've actually got to sit and talk with Jesus. I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it. I am going to have it. I am going to give myself to such a place of walking with the Lord that he cannot resist come talking to me. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to devote myself to loving him. I'm going to pull the love strings on him. I'll pull the love card on Jesus to the point that he comes and sits down and talks to me and tells me exactly, specifically, how I'm going to go do and accomplish these things that he put upon my life when I was still in my mother's womb. Ha-ra-ba-ba. Herestea. When the prophet of the Lord came, he just died about, he actually was here in San Diego about 20 years ago, came and talked to my mom and told my mother, the hand of the Lord is upon the, the 
the boy, the baby boy that's in your womb. Father, I want to understand exactly what you've been preparing me for. I, I thought it should be underway a lot quicker than how I didn't think I was supposed to have to go through all these things that it seems that I've had to go through. I don't understand that I was going to have to do all these things that, that I've, had to, I've had to do and go through all these things I had to go through. Everybody's got that story to tell. Hey, hang in there now. Be, a, be, be clay in Potter's hand. Be sanctified unto every good work. Prepared. Sanctified unto the things of the living God. Prepared unto every good work. Prepared to do these things that Jesus did. Huh? We understand how that God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power and went about doing good works. Huh? Prepared unto every good work, doing the good works, these works and greater works. We understand how that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing, uh, uh, who went about healing all those who were oppressed of the devil as well. These works shall you do, greater works. These works, the works that I've done. Peter, remember when I was walking on the water? You did those works and greater. Peter, Johnston, all, all the disciples are there. Remember when the dead were raised? All on a day, remember the blind, the deaf, the mute, the lame? Remember the disease that were cured? The body parts, the maims that, that were cured, and limbs grew out? Remember these work? You do them. You're going to do them. Hallelujah. And greater works than these. Mambranda said, that's the will of the Father. If I'm going to honor the Father and submit to His will, I'm going to press in for having these things. If I'm going to have those things, then I'm going to be willing to separate myself into a place that I can now be prepared into every good work I can be taught of God. People want to try to do this on their own. They want to try through ritualistic practices now you know I'm gonna do these things and I'm gonna do that thing and I'm gonna fast and I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna read the Bible and I'm on and on all good things but then they get it into a process of thinking of how they're gonna do it through their own strength no you need to understand how to connect with the Holy Ghost because this is the righteousness which is by the faith of Jesus Christ this is the righteousness of the new birth this is the righteousness of being now filled with the Spirit with a new heart and a new spirit now this is the righteousness that comes because we baptized in the Holy Ghost to go represent him to depend upon Jesus, to depend upon the Holy Ghost, to say, I can do nothing of myself. Lord, I'm just dependent upon you. Hallelujah. I, see, I plug in, I touch heaven with this realm of praise. I reach in, I touch heaven with this communing with the Lord as I read the Word of God. I'm going to read a couple of verses of Scripture to you, then I'm going to let you go home and go sleep. <laughs> so you can get up in the morning and put to flight all the armies of the aliens. Did you know that there was aliens among us? Did you know there was aliens? There are aliens among us. Demon spirits. Huh? They're not supposed to be in around here. Huh? Angels of darkness. They ain't supposed to be working around here. I mean, out of here in Jesus' name. Ha Who put to flight the armies of the aliens. Those aliens are those who do not belong. Don't have the right to be here. Huh? Jesus went, went about destroying the works of the devil. Jesus went about killing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. Amen? Amen. These works shall you do in greater works. Jesus went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil. I can tell you over and again, over and again, I can show you over and again where sickness and disease is demonic oppression. Jesus went about healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. Uh, hallelujah. Even paralysis, people crippled. Oh, it's a neurological problem. It's oppressed of the devil. Oh, it's deaf. They don't have an eardrum. It's the press of the devil. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And if anybody's going to be able to function properly in going and executing God's will to heal the sick and, and, and to cure the disease, they have to have power and authority against unclean spirits to cast them out. It was always center to the authority to preach the gospel. Huh? Sometimes people see me worshiping and they see me starting to get real violent. I start, I'll start looking around people and say, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. They're going, Mom, what's wrong with him? Huh? I'm going I'm to press into a realm that I know about. I'm not going to let anything get in the way. Nothing's going to get in the way. The kingdom of God suffers violent and the violent are here. Amen. Yeah. Satan's doing everything he can do. 
to run interference, to oppose the work of God. He hates the anointing. He fights against the anointing. He will use whatever power is available to him to run interference with the anointing. But there's a stronger than him that is here right now. Christ Jesus. And those who know how to flow in that strength of the Lord and the power of his might will arise at the occasion. They'll recognize the influence and the hindrances that the enemy is trying to execute and will knock it down by the power and the spirit of the Lord where praise just gets louder, where, where shouts of worship just get more radical, where the, the pray, prayer and petition just becomes more fiery. <laughs> Because the righteous prayers, uh, uh, the prayers of a righteous man avails much. And you're looking at a righteous man right here. Hallelujah. Are you looking at somebody who's got the very righteousness of God? Praise God. You're looking at somebody who's got the righteousness of Jesus. And somebody said, where did you get that? Who do you think you are? Right? Somebody said to me, somebody said to me, said, what's your vision in life? I said, I've got many visions. And purposes. Oh, well, I thought you were going to say to be like Christ. I said, what do you mean? I'm already like Christ. And the guy's looking at me. He said, yeah, it came to me as a free gift. And the lights went on. And he goes, wow, you're right. That's right. It did come as a free gift. I pray that the lights come on for you tonight. Wow. I have the righteousness of God. My, that's my strength. I have the very life of Jesus Christ. I've been, come, I've been invited to come and abide in him. It was given to me as a gift. Hallelujah. He's manifested in my mortal body. All I got to do is yield to the Holy Ghost and begin to shout the shouts uh, of the Holy Ghost. Begin to sing the songs of, uh, of the redeemed. The sound of joy in my mouth. The voice of praise upon my lips. A sharp, sharp, two-edged sword in my hand. Whereby I am able to steal the avenger. Hallelujah. It's the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That's the special kind of Word of God. That's the Word of God that's been put in our mouth that comes out of our belly by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name you never, you never look at yourself the same. I pray in the name of Jesus that you never have a problem, but you already have the answer. Hallelujah. <laughs> And then I'm an uncle there today. I pray in the name of Jesus you never have an offense or, or you never have an issue or a hurt or a, a, a sadness or a sorrow or a pain or, or, or a tear ever again. I pray in the name of Jesus you never have a grief ever again. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that from this day forward you live in the abundant life, the joyful life, the life of God, the life of peace, the reign, a uh, reign of glory, not the reign of terror, the reign uh, of the Prince of Peace, not the reign of fear. Oh, he's delivered us from the bondage of fear where we were healed all our life <laughs> under the subjection of Satan's lies and intimidation and accusation and condemnation and his railings against God and his people. I pray in the name of Jesus you understand how to stand up against that mess. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me just read a list of scriptures here to you. It says, the Lord says, Jesus says, sanctify them by your word, Lord. He, he's, he, over and again, let, let, let me read these verses of scripture to you rather than just try to, to quote them. You can open your Bibles with me and, and go with me to, go with me quickly to John chapter 17. And I believe it's verse 19. I thought I had a thing there on the computer lined up, but 
Just let me read a couple verses of scripture to you. He said, Jesus said, and for their sakes I sanctify myself that they may be sanctified through the truth. Paul said in Acts chapter 21. Go in there and look there. Sometimes I just get where I can't read and I was just going to have to quote the verse. <laughs> Paul said, I commend you into the word, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them who are sanctified. When we, we, when we consider all the things that Paul said in the book of Hebrews concerning what Christ Jesus did when he sanctified us with his own life, Starting in Can you give me the Bible? <laughs> I just tell Kuramasa Tevri Nigalana Mama today. Hava Sikiti of her. See as the computer doesn't work, I'm praying the Holy Ghost till the Lord gives me the verse. Is she cut a number today? It works this way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me just give you a couple of verse scripture out of Hebrews. Okay, Hebrews chapter. I'll go ahead, go Hebrews chapter 10, verse 13 to start with. Uh, and then we'll go back to quickly to Hebrews chapter 2. Just want to just show a couple of verses of scripture. Ilama nombanda de fete. She called a mamba nanda de fetila. Hallelujah. And of course, if you got a little computer program, you could just put in there sanctified and you'd find a whole bunch of these verses of scripture. But I want to just help you understand that this is something that the Lord has already done for us. And because He sanctified us by the Spirit of truth, we sanctified by the Holy Ghost, we sanctified by the Word of truth, we sanctified by his own life. We sanctified, he's perfected forever them that he has sanctified, that he has given to us this place to be set apart here to live by the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost so that we don't have to try to do it of ourselves. When you're communing with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord is talking to you and strengthening you and empowering you and giving you insight and ability to understand why you're supposed to not allow those things in your life, what God has planned for your life, the heaven that he wants to reveal to your life. <laughs> My. It's a whole different, it's a whole different event. It's a whole different outcome. It's a whole different dynamic when Satan's tempting you and the Holy Ghost talking to you mm -hmm, <laughs> about how you've been equipped to stand against him, about how you've been set apart to stay over here in this heavenly realm to represent Jesus, that you're in the kingdom of Christ Jesus and the powers of darkness trying to come to claim you. Just like Pharaoh's army tried to come out and claim Israel. Huh? You know, I don't, Israel wasn't really being tempted about being run over by a chariot and, and run through with a, a spear and driven back into the mud pits of Goshen. They knew exactly what those chariots were all about. They were crying out to God for help. I pray that you'd be able to have the insights of the Holy Ghost that when you find yourself in trouble and you find yourself under fiery trial, you cry out for help too instead of start to be entertained by it and think that it might be something that you would like to be taken back into slavery. Let me, I'm going to try to read this to you. Start at verse 10. The Lord says to us, by whose will we were sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. Here's my sanctification. He's my sanctification. He's my justification. He's my redemption. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm set apart in Him. Hallelujah. I find myself holy and acceptable because a sanctified life is a holy life. It's a life of holiness. Huh? All of us who are sanctified in Christ Jesus called to be saints. Amen? Amen. 
that the Apostle Paul's addressed to the church. All of you, he's addressing all the church. He said, all of you are set apart in Christ Jesus, sanctified in Christ Jesus, consecrated unto the life of Jesus. Are you consecrated to the life of Jesus? Or are you going to get up tomorrow morning and are you going to live your own life? I'm asking you a question. Are you consecrated to the life of Jesus? Or are you going to get up in the morning and live your own life? Think about it. God in His mercy through His grace has given to us the gift to where that we are sanctified in Him. We have the same sanctification. We have the same place that we have been set apart unto God to of the, the dimension in which we've been separated unto God and the purpose for which we've been separated unto God is that purpose which, for which Jesus Christ himself has. That's our place. Are we to get up and live his life tomorrow? Are we going to get up and give ourselves to the same kind of obedience to the Holy Ghost? Because we sanctified through the spirit of truth. We sanctified through the word of truth. Are we going to give ourselves then to the Holy Spirit for his life to be ultimately his will his, his, the things that he wants to teach us and show us and do through our lives. Are we going to give ourselves over to him to yield to him so that that can be done because we're sanctified to the spirit of truth so the spirit of truth can work through our lives, be manifested through us. Are we sanctified? To, we're sanctified under the word of truth so that the word of God can rule over us, live in us, have his expression in our lives to where we can learn perfect obedience to the word. We're sanctified for that purpose. And then verse 13, rather, I'll find what I want to find here in a minute. Hallelujah. <laughs> Mumbom recifi kelona mumpanda deyara. Allah sepura viki telana makatara dey. Hallelujah. Sibro mama nananda deva deya. Chapter 2, verse 11. I know there's another scripture there in Hebrews chapter 10 that I was wanted to read, but I couldn't see it. Huh? But I'm going to go ahead and read this one because I can see this one. <laughs> What does 14 say? Isn't that a beautiful scripture? Did, you, did everybody else see that verse? Only the folks that were looking saw it. I was looking for it. I couldn't see it. It's the one I was actually looking for. For he has forever perfected them that are sanctified. Oh, you say he's forever perfected them that are sanctified. Then all I need to do is get sanctified. Well, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11 says this. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he's not ashamed to call us brethren. We sanctify him through what he did. He set himself apart so that we could be set apart through him. I pray in Jesus' name that that is an unspeakable gift and opportunity and privilege to you tonight. I pray that you can see that you're, I pray that you can see yourself set apart by Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, to do the things that Christ Jesus himself did and manifested and revealed when he walked this earth so that you also can see yourself doing those things that he's doing now and will be doing throughout the ages to come. In the heavenly realm, we is now King of kings and Lord of lords. To find ourselves there in him. I mean, you want to be found in him on that day. That bug ain't going to hurt you. I promise you. He will be found in him in that day. You, 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 you want to be found in him when you breathe out your last breath. I believe that everybody in this place is desperate about that. Are you desperate about that? I'm desperate. I'm desperate about that. I want to be found in him. Then we want you to be desperate about being found in him right now. 
I want you to be desperate about being found in Him tomorrow morning when you get up. I want you to be desperate about finding, being found in Him when you're faced with temptation and everything that Satan would try to throw at you, destroy you. Or to just neutralize you. Or to condemn you. Or to basically beat you down to the point where you don't have the ability to stand up in the boldness and the confidence that is in Christ Jesus. If there's ever a time that God's people have got to be willing to be consecrated to the life of Jesus Christ, it's now. Amen. If there's ever a time that we're going to have to look, and I know in that verse of Scripture that I was reading there in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 16, I know that verse 17 also says, and also these things. Purge yourself also for these things. And, and then Paul then begins to deal with the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye. If there's any time that you have to understand how to be consecrated to the life of Jesus, it's right now. If there's any time you have to be willing to learn how to resist the devil steadfast in the faith, it's right now. We're talking about the faith, the faith where we don't live by our own strength and by our own power. We can do nothing of ourselves, but we live and walk in Jesus. Live and move and have our being in Him. Live and walk in the Holy Ghost. We have no boat of no confidence in the flesh. We are the circumcision who worships God in the Spirit, and we have no confidence in the flesh. In other words, we are the circumcision who worships God by the Holy Ghost and have no confidence in our human ability and strength. I told the, told the people at at so last night, so S O W School of Worship, so you're gonna reap something good. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said you can tell how ready you are to flow in worship by how fluent you are in the language of the Spirit flowing out of you as the Holy Ghost utterance is flowing there. People, go ahead and give yourself to that. Go ahead and give you got a most shot. I'm gonna give you that. Give yourself to that all throughout the day. Go, just go ahead and follow Paul as he followed Jesus. He said, I speak in tongues more than anyone. And, it's, and, and, and I mean, goodness gracious, said, I, I'm, I'm going to follow those whose faith was, as Paul's faith was revealed. Why follow somebody who says you're not supposed to speak in tongues? What are they doing? What have they done? What verse of Scripture did they get in the Bible? Huh? Paul said, I preach, fully preached the gospel from Jerusalem to Illyricum, the whole known world, basically. I'm fully preached with mighty signs and wonders. I'm going to do what he did. I'm going to do what the guy down at the seminary says to do. Huh? Give yourself to the working and operation of the Holy Ghost. Give yourself to the shouts of praise. Huh? Give yourself to the joy. Give yourself to the blessings. Give yourself to living in, in the secret place. You know what the secret place is? It's a place where all you need is in Jesus. That's a secret place. It's a place where all that you have need of, you find in Him. That's a secret place. They that, debat, they that dwell in a secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You want to abide, you want a shadow of the Almighty? Dwell in a secret place. Be separated in a secret place. Give yourself to that. Don't allow, don't allow all this stuff. Don't allow all this nonsense. Don't allow all this bad attitudes. Don't allow all these wrong thinking, wrong thoughts. Weapons of warfare are not carnal. Though you in the flesh, you don't wear out the flesh. The weapons of warfare are mighty through God. To pull down the strongholds. Cast down those silly imaginations. Those vain imaginations. Those offenses against Christ Jesus and the kingdom of God. Separated to do the will of the Father. To say first and foremost, Christ Jesus lives in me. I'm going to purge myself from these things. I'm going to give myself to the knowledge of Christ. I'm not allow anything that would try to work in my body. Work in my spirit. I'm not going to allow ungodliness. I'm not going to allow satanic suggestions of any kind. I'm not going to allow the fruits of demons, the fruits of unholy spirit, fruits of unholy spirits. Just take the fruits of the spirit, and there's an opposite for them. Huh? Fruits of the Holy Spirit, there's an opposite of it at work. In, in the unholy spirit in the demonic realm. Huh? People oppressed by the devil walk around sad and sorrowful. 
People, are, people full of the Spirit walk around joyful. Amen. Therefore, you just, said, you just said, I'm going to consecrate myself to living in this realm. Everybody stand with me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. She called her manga dea. Solomon dea. Solomon brado. She bought a mangari. She varina nane. Billy men and man among the bara. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just tell you right now, just receive the life of Jesus. Right now. I say called her manga dea. I say right now in Jesus' name, receive the life of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me tell you about the life of Jesus. God anointed him with the oil of joy above all the others around him. <laughs> so go ahead and receive the life of Jesus. Oh. She ru sham blu ke lu she blu mam brom gaya jala baya ter no ishikane jisuru mai ersila no be to yabritu right now in the name of Jesus Hallelujah Hallelujah I want to I want to pray for those anybody sick and in pain go ahead I want to pray for anybody sick and in pain anybody has any any, any pain in, in your body, the Lord heal you right now. Anybody have any pain in the clavicle area, in the, in the, the neck area and clavicle area? Just come, the Lord is healing you. Just, anybody, just come, just come. Anybody in pain? Come on, you can come. You can get sickness in your body. Anybody have pain? Come on. Have pain. Anybody have pain in the clavicle area, in the neck area? Just come. Anybody, anybody, anybody else with pain in, in the clavicle area? Pain's going now. Thank you, Father, for the healing anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Here goes pain. Father, we thank you for strengthening the body of your servant, Daniel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for healing. Lord, I thank you for the fire of your presence. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, all for grace. To trust in I'm so glad that I learned to trust you Jesus Jesus Savior friend and I know that you are with me and will be with me to the end. Father, I thank you for the mighty anointing that you placed upon my son who stand before kings and prime ministers and presidents. To declare your word, nothing to stop. No weapon formed against him, no instrument of hell will be able to stop him. The enemy might fight, run interference, use people that God has given an opportunity for greatness, but chose rather no. I don't want any of it. Nothing's going to stop you, Kelly. Pastor Kelly, nothing's going to stop your mind.
the passions that you had, the things that you wanted to fulfill in God, Father's got bigger plans than you got. <laughs> Father's got other ideas. He wants to show scenes of heaven through your life in different ways than you imagine. And Papa's going to have his way <laughs> so long as we're willing. Ah, Jesus, Jesus. Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Father, I thank you that you fulfill all your goodwill with the work of faith and power. And I thank you, oh God, that you bring to pass those things that men thought impossible. And that the glory of that which you establish and do will make the past look as a vague dream <laughs> that you really can't fully remember for the thrills and the goodness of God and the pleasant land that he's caused you to dwell in and live in. So satiate your soul. <laughs> I'm so glad I learned to trust Him. Jesus, Jesus, say your friend. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. So how are you feeling now? Huh? Have some of that. Have some of this. Because this is that. Ah, uh, what a security. Mom, let me filled. Be filled with every good thing that pertains to life and godliness. Be filled with all the good things of heaven that belong to Jesus. They're yours. They're yours. It's yours. Given to you. All I got to do is receive. Jesus, Jesus, precious. Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody tonight you hear you uncertain about where you stand with God? Do you know what place you've fallen out? Are you concerned? Has there been too much of the enemy taking advantage over your life and you uncertain as where you stand with God? Do you want to have good standing with God tonight? You want to have right standing with God tonight? Father is here calling you. The mercy of Christ Jesus is here available to you so that you can have a right standing with God tonight. Your life, whole life will be changed. And you can walk in a different direction. Tonight, if there's anyone uncertain about where they stand with God, there's no reason for you to leave here anything other than full of confidence and joy in the Holy Ghost. Every demon power, every foul thing, every, every unholy thing, every destructive thing have to leave your life tonight. If you walk out of here refusing this opportunity, You've chosen, understand this, you've chosen to hold on to a terrible existence. It's not God's fault. God made a way so that you don't have to live a life of torment and hell anymore.
I really like that scene that was painted in a picture where a person who had an opportunity to sit down with Jesus and ask Jesus why he was allowing all these terrible things in the earth and sickness and disease and sorrow and famine. Jesus said, funny you ask. I was getting ready to ask you why you was allowing it. <laughs> Christ Jesus come to remedy. Everywhere he went, he showed the remedy. See, he focused on one nation. He focused on one nation. And said nice to all the rest. <laughs> Told us to go everywhere, preach the gospel. Cast out devils. Raise the dead. Represent all the glory of heaven. God has an opportunity for you tonight so that you will no longer be taken captive by the things that this world would try to impose upon you. Parents, parents, listen to me. The things, the wrong attitudes, the wrong opinions that you have in your life, your children will inherit. Get rid of them. Get right with God. Let Jesus Christ reign in your house through your attitudes, through your words, through your thoughts, through the life that you live. Thank you, Jesus. Just going to wait just a few more minutes for anybody. For anybody in here tonight that's concerned about your soul, the condition of your soul. Anybody in this place that's concerned about the, your life and the condition of your life. Anybody watching by web or by the YouTube. You're concerned about the condition of your soul. You're concerned about the condition of your life. I want you to know that Christ Jesus paid the price that you might have a guarantee and a surety. That all will be right in your life now. That heaven can be in your life right now. God paid the price for you so heaven can be in your life now and in the future. That you might know the ways of life now and in the future. You don't have to know the ways of death. You don't have to live out a, a death life. You don't have to be one of the walking dead. It's funny how people prophesy over themselves and do movies about the life that they live. You don't have to be the walking dead. Hallelujah. You can come up to life in Christ Jesus. He that has Jesus Christ has life. In other words, he that possesses Christ Jesus or lives the life of Christ has life. He that does not have Jesus or does not live the life of Christ does not have life. The dead while they live. That's what God said.